first, so we're going to get moving. Uh, good morning, I'm Bob Tiffany. I'm the President of San Diego uh, County Business Council. Um, and uh, the San Diego County Business Council is hosting this event. I uh, want to, in particular, uh, thank Christina Chavez Wyatt right up front, who's spent a tremendous amount of time putting this together with uh, the help of uh, Sean Novak as well from the San Diego County Water Resource Agency. So thank you very much, Christina and Sean. We really appreciate you putting this together. Um, I also wanted to recognize our uh, sponsors for today's uh, event. Uh, San Diego County Farm Bureau, Tri-Cal, Granite Rock, Central Egg uh, Supply, Gallon College, uh, Veolia, The Garden Mart, Town, uh, excuse me, Todd, Groundwater, The Air Park, uh, Pacific Scientific, Sound and Oaks, and Christina's uh, Company Farmhouse Communications. So thank you to our sponsors, and uh, with that we're going to get moving. Um, we have a long list of speakers. We've asked everyone to keep it relatively brief, uh, otherwise we would be going into the weekend. Um, so we've asked everyone to keep it to five, seven minutes, somewhere in that range. At the end of the program, we are going to uh, have time for some questions and answers, and we'll have uh, some people come up. And uh, uh, but I'm sure that at, you know, as we go forward, if you if you have a question, write it down, and we'll we'll get to it as we uh, toward the end of the the program. Um, this is uh, the 2017 San Diego County Water Forum. Uh, we were coordinating this in response to requests from leaders in local government, water agencies, ag community, land use, business. Um, the idea is to uh, the fact that water is such a precious um, resource and valuable commodity. Uh, we wanted to bring everyone up to date on the status of water allocations, the drought, local flooding. Um, and, and we're going to be hearing from people from the national, state, regional, local experts. Uh, we have uh, people that really are touching on all phases of, of water uh, throughout the uh, community. And, and like I said, nationally, statewide, it affects San Diego County uh, and the city of Hollister and the city of San Juan Bautista. I wanted to uh, recognize we do have uh, a handful of elected officials as well as other distinguished people, but I'm not going to recognize everyone, but I did want to mention uh, we have from the Hollister City Council, Ray Friend is here, uh, somewhere I saw Ray earlier, there you are right up front. Um, I, I haven't seen Mickey, but Mickey may be walking in, Mickey Luna, are you back here? Mickey, thanks for being here. Um, very distinguished, I was talking to him, I told him I had to show more respect in the future, Jim West, who's our... <laughs> Vice uh, Mayor from San Juan Batista, Jim, where are you? Uh, okay. You're in the back. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Dan DeVries, are you here from uh, San Juan Batista Council as well? You're out there. And um, I believe I haven't seen him yet, but Robert Rivas from the Board of Supervisors uh, may be coming as well. Um, later, showing up. Uh, Probably in the next hour or so will be both uh, assembly member from the 30th district, uh, Anna Caballero, as well as uh, Jimmy Panetta, uh, our U.S. Congress member from the 20th district, and they will be coming later and speaking as well. So, with that being uh, said, again, I want to thank all of you for being here. Uh, our first speaker is going to be. Uh, Jeff Catano from the San Diego County Water District. Uh, he's the general manager. So, Jeff, you're first in line. Thank you for coming. Good morning. Thanks for all of you for coming this morning. Um, I'm going to start off the presentation for you um, this morning. Uh, so the idea items that we're going to be going over are going to be the water supply for the, the for our county, um, the State Level Groundwater Management Act, Iris Priestaff from Todd Groundwater is going to go over that, that's recently passed by, by the state. 
<clears throat> our water supply for the urban area, uh, Don Wright and Howard and, and Bill uh, Vera are going to be going over that for you, and I'm going to give you a little bit of an update from the district's perspective of where we are with, with water supply for the urban area. Um, <clears throat> that Bill's going to move into development, and then we'll finish off with Sean with the water quality and water conservation uh, items. So, so be to begin with, uh, our groundwater is where I wanted to start. Our community has had a long history of, of management and activity in managing of the groundwater. It goes all the way back to 1920 when the community started, to, you know, our area first started to look at groundwater issues, start to monitor and keep track of what the, the, uh, the, the water quality was and the, and the quantity of water, uh, measuring the, the wells. Uh, we go, you know, back into the 50s is when uh, we, we recognized that we needed to do something about groundwater and uh, overdraft, and that's when the Hernandez Vicinas projects were, were built uh, and started to be designed. And then <clears throat> into the 70s, 60s when um, the, the district started looking into getting a federal contract um, through the Central Valley Project, and then in 1977 when the, the ballot measure was passed and everybody in in San Benito County decided that it was very important to import the, the water to be able to balance the, ba balance the basin. So, <clears throat> one of the issues that we have with, with our groundwater uh, in our basin is that basically it's, it's a closed basin and the, the, the majority of the water that's in our groundwater comes through the San Benito River system and it's that San Benito River system is built on green sediments and when it, when in that, what happens is those marine sediments contribute a lot of calcium and magnesium to our groundwater, so it's naturally very hard. Uh, in addition to that, the basin is basically closed. There, it, what we mean by a closed basin is the water comes into our basin and there's not a lot of water that leaves. The only way that the water leaves our basin is through the Chittenden Gap, and that's only when the groundwater level gets high enough that it actually starts to flow out towards the Paparo River. So there's, there are some issues there that we've been struggling with, you know, just naturally, and that's part of the reason that the salts build up in our basin, is because it's a closed basin, so everything that comes in stays there. The water may evaporate off of it, but it leaves the salts behind. That's why we basically have this very salty basin. And that's what kind of drove uh, the, the community to really look for an alternative supply and bring in that CBP water, because it's a much higher quality. Um, so uh, basically our basin, again, um, is what we rely upon when, when there are shortages and the, the, this past drought, we rely very heavily on that. Um, San Luis Reservoir, if you want to think about that, holds about 2 million acre feet of water. Our basin effectively, the effective usage space in there is about half a million acre feet. So there's a significant amount of water stored in our basin when it's full. Uh, and going into this last drought, it, we had a full basin, so we're, we were able to rely upon that, that, that water supply and that, that water that we had banked there to be able to get us through. Um, we had, you know, in the last you know, three years prior to this, the total amount of water that we got for our agricultural customers through our Central Valley Project contract was only about 1,700 acre feet of water. Um, so it was, it's, it's, it was you know, quite short. Um, our federal contract um, is 43,800 acre feet. Um, it takes about 9,000 acre feet of water a year to, to satisfy the, the urban demand and about 35,000 acre feet of water a year to, to satisfy the, the agricultural demand. And that agricultural demand is only in, but that we're talking about is only in zone six. Uh, it, doesn't it doesn't include the, the bolsa part of the basin. That's not in zone six. Um, so if you look at this last year, um, so our CVP supply from the, from the federal contract for municipal water was only 55%, um, and that's 45,000 45, <coughs> acre feet of water. And remember, again, we, we need about 9,000 acre feet to supply the, the urban demand. And then again, last year, we only had 1,700 acre feet for agricultural supply. We did have more agricultural water that we were able to deliver last year, and that's primarily because the district worked very hard to secure additional water supplies from outside sources. Uh, so we did have a significant amount of water. We had about 8,000 acre feet of water that we were able to actually deliver last year. 
The unfortunate part of that is that water was very expensive. It was a, and what we were able to sell it for was seven hundred and sixty dollars an acre foot. A lot of that water that we purchased last year cost the district over eleven hundred dollars an acre foot. But what we were able to do is we were able to combine that with other water sources and transfers that we had in that from bringing it from other places where we had water that we didn't pay the full eleven hundred dollars. Uh, so we were able to, to aggregate that and be able to deliver that, and it actually helped us get through last year. For this year, uh, it looks much better, it's about as good as it can get. We have a full 100% on our ag and m &I supply. That was uh, quite shocking to us. Uh, last year when we were going into the fall, we were all anticipating that uh, with the La Nina uh, conditions that we're building, that it was going to be a dry year and that we were probably looking at another very short allocation. Uh, much to our surprise, uh, it rained and it, you know, everybody else is probably shocked too, but we were actually, this year we got 100% uh, on both of our contracts. That's a significant amount of water, that's 43,800 acre feet of water that we have to work with this year. Uh, and unfortunately for us, we can't actually use that much uh, right now. The allocation came very late. Uh, so there was a lot of the, the folks on the, in the agricultural community that had already made their planting plans and their contracts, uh, so they hadn't anticipated the, the additional water that we were going to get. So there, there will be a lot of that water that I'm going to have to try to figure out where we're going to store or, or move, and there may actually be a significant amount that we lose. We are, at, are actively, at this point, um, percolating water again because we have sufficient water to do that. Uh, so this year we're looking at uh, Percolating probably about 4,000 acre feet of water. That's the first year that the district's had enough water to do that since about 2007. Uh, so it's, it's significant. It takes about 20,000 acre feet of water a year to be able to, to balance our basin imported water. And, um, you know, we've gotten significantly less than that on average over the last 10 years. Um, so for our local water supply, uh, we are looking good in, in the local water supply. Hernandez this year is full at 17,500 acre feet. That's the first year that that's happened in quite a few years. So we are anticipating we're going to be using probably all of that water to be to move into through the San Benito River system and percolate that into, into back into the basin this year to help bring back those those uh, those water levels, particularly in San Juan Basin. So the year to date, um, it's been good on the San Benito River. We've gotten 33,000 acre feet of water has passed the, the 150, the old 156 bridge or, or 4th Street uh, in the San Juan Basin. So we've seen a significant increase in the groundwater levels just from this year from, from the natural runoff. Uh, in some of the wells out in San Juan Valley, it's come up 15 feet already. And we'll, we're anticipating that that's going to continue moving you know, as we move through the summer and the water moves through the system uh, and into the wells that we're going to continue to see those rises. In addition to that, again, we're going to be taking that 17,500 acre feet of water from Hernandez and percolating it into the to San Juan Valley through the San Diego River system. Uh, and we'll probably be starting to do that in, in the next week or so. Uh, the rainfall today has been amazing. Um, we have almost 21, uh, 21 inches of water this year, uh, and our average is, um, is about 13 and a half. So we've got 164% of our average, which is amazing. It's, it's been excellent. So on the imported water supply, again, um, that has been a challenge for us. And, and like I said, we need to have 20,000 acre feet a year that we get from our contract. So only about 50% of the contract is the amount is what we need to keep the basin in balance, but we've gotten significantly less than that. So over the last 10 years, on average, we've gotten 34% of our agricultural <laughs> contract amount, 12,000, a little over 12,000 acre feet, and 68.5% of our M&I contract. 5,600 acre feet. The total, um, we've gotten around 17,000 acre feet on average, but that's a little bit misleading because there there were years in there when, uh, again, when we had uh, a significant water supply where we, you know, in, where we got an 85 percent year, uh, where we were unable to use all of the water, had to transfer some of it out. But that was to did 
was an advantage to the district in some ways because we were able to make a trade with Santa Clara and trade some of that water up and then bring it back in in dry years, which is why, why we were able to make some of those deliveries in the years we've got a 0% allocation. We were still able to deliver water to our agricultural customers. Uh, so lastly, um, what I wanted to go over here for you um, is, you know, just kind of the water supply for the urban area, how we get where that water comes from. Uh, most of, you know, obviously the water, the, the imported water comes through the San Felipe system, um, but it, it's not all from CVP. We have water that we have banked in other areas. Uh, the district has um, about a year supply of water for the urban area bank in what's called the semi-tropic water bank down in, in Wasco. So that's where we have some of those, those bank out of bank basin banking. Um, we have other local surface water supplies that we're looking at possibly bringing into the system um, and from, from other local surface uh, waters from say uh, Los Vibros and Dos Picachos Creeks. Um, and then the future banking issue pro uh, projects that the district's looking at. Uh, so all of those are you know, some, from the water supply for the urban area. We also have a recycled water project that, that we're working on um, and that we've, uh, the field is going to be reporting on to you today, but we started last year uh, and it's been very successful. We were able to deliver about a thousand acre feet of water last year and we're looking at delivering maybe up to 1,400 acre feet this year to, to customers along right with it. Uh, 